Excuse me. I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl. And this is my other brother Daryl. <laughs> we can save this town. Well, uh, how are you going to do that? We can make it snow. <laughs> well, of course, only God can make it snow. But sometimes he needs a little goose. <laughs> That's where we come in. Our fee is one thousand dollars. Two thousand if you want it to stick. <laughs> Does this laughter represent crafty negotiating on your part? No, Larry. This seems to be the one thing we all agree on. Thanks, but no thanks. Fine. We'll all bite the big one together. <laughs> Come on, Daryl. A town without pity. Hi, hi, guys. Can I, uh, can I talk to you about something? Just so it's not 18th century interior design. <laughs> uh, actually, I'm here on, on behalf of the town. They want me to speak to you about about making it snow. Seems like the last time we saw the town, it was making a municipal mockery of us. <laughs> Well, they've they've reconsidered. Here's the here's the town's check for two thousand dollars. Well, should we decide to take this job, we'll of course need to see the town's driver's license <laughs> and one other form of ID. Well, guys, it isn't like the town is going to skip town. <laughs> Even so. Faith is an important part of our snowmaking process. We can't accept this check until we know that you, as the town's representative, have complete faith in us. Do you? Well, uh... no faith, no snow. Uh, actually, I, I honestly believe that in in some in some strange way. You, you and your brothers will, will, will do something, and at some point after that, <laughs> it, it will snow. Well, this guy's going to the wall for us. Okay, we'll do it. Daryl, make a list. We'll need the usual supplies. Cannonball, fabric softener, two pounds of veal, uh, obviously, you you guys know what you're doing. <laughs> oh, there, there's there's a deadline. They they need that snow by by one tomorrow. Well, that doesn't give us much time. Daryl, better add pimentos. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got a mountain to ascend. Oh, I should warn you. There's one little hitch to this snowmaking process. I know you can't guarantee results. Oh, no. It'll snow all right. It's just that on a rush job like this, we can't promise that two snowflakes won't look alike. <laughs> Got him. Three male cocks. They didn't put up much of a struggle. Why should we? We was hidden here anyway. What's all this about? Uh, Larry, they, they think the snowmaking thing was a, was a swindle. Oh, dear. I guess they don't have the faith in us. You do. Go, go figure. Why'd you withdraw your funds from the bank this morning? We moved it to another financial institution that was paying significantly higher interest and giving away toasters. <laughs> what about this cash register you're lugging around? We needed it to add you up an itemized bill. You never heard of a hand calculator? You can get one of these that'll fit in your hand? I wouldn't say anything more if I were you. You boys could be looking at three to five years of kissing your honeys through plate glass. I guess we deserve it. We promised you snow and all you got was a sky full of zilch. Daryl, are you sure you was naked and facing east while you was juggling them chipmunks? <laughs> it just don't figure. We covered all bases. It's snowing! It's really coming down. Yeah. 
and it's sticking too. I withdraw my resignation and declare the snow carnival officially on. Yeah! Here's your check back. Larry, you earned it. You made it snow. The deadline was one. We was a minute and a half late. Besides, this is shoddy workmanship. What, what, what do you mean? As we feared, two identical flakes. <laughs> Hi, I'm Larry. This is my brother Daryl, and this is my other brother Daryl. We would like to announce a grand opening. Of, of what? Of our new escort service. <laughs> We almost called it the uh, Anything for a Buck Escort Service. But Daryl thought we ought to try something more romantic. The Acme Escort Service. How'd you guys come up with this idea? Well, we was wondering how to raise the money to buy into a timeshare condo near Epcot when Daryl realized what a valuable commodity we are in ourselves. Yeah, you're, you're right up there with with pork bellies. Thank you. Daryl, tack one of them little eye catchers right there. Uh, no. Uh, you see, Larry, we have this pile of brochures, and uh, when single women are looking for something to do, oddly enough, the first place they tend to look is right here. Near the bottom? Go, go figure women. <laughs> Well, we better get back before them calls from affection star females start flooding in. <laughs> oh, no. Miss Parkman, you didn't call. Acme Escort Service. Serving the community for over 24 hours. Are you, are, are, you, are you all right? I'm fine. Of course she is. We haven't lost one yet. Miss Parkman, we thought you were going to have dinner at the Spinnaker. We begged you. She didn't need to. Our fee includes a meal. I've never trapped my own hors d'oeuvres before. Well, where have you been all this time? She said she wanted to see some nightlife, so naturally we took her right to the Bat Cave. <laughs> the, the Bat Cave? They're real friendly. If you stand perfectly still, they'll come and land right in your hair. He's right. After that, we pretended we was lost in the woods. You were pretending? Well, Daryl sensed you didn't want the evening to end. Does he know women or what? How much do I owe you for... How much do I owe you? Well, we'll keep a running tab. So what time will you be needing our services tonight? Ah, thank you. That's very sweet, but I'm planning to spend today and tonight washing my hair. Oh. Well, I hate to imprison a noble sentiment in mere words, but... Bye. <laughs> Wait here, Steph. I'll, I'll find a seat. Fine. I may still be here when you get back. <laughs> oh, what do you know? Candace Bergen at our town meeting? Hey, Candy. <laughs> My mistake. It's just old Mrs. Trogdon. <laughs> Keep a sharp eye, Daryl. There's a sissy in the vicinity. Oh, Michael, you're wearing that cologne again. Not me, Steph. Oda Allen has been banished from this nape. <laughs> well, someone's wearing it. Stephanie, I haven't even started yet. Sorry, George, it's just a little aversion therapy. 
From now on, Steph will equate O to Alan with O to ooh, ooh, ooh. <laughs> Oh, my goodness. No wonder Miss Stephanie ran screaming from the room. I have seen the sissy and he is us. Here, I'll make a note. Soon as the river thaws, it's bath time. Hello. Hi. I'm Larry. This is my brother, Daryl, and this is my other brother, Daryl. Please, grab a rump full of vinyl. Oh, thank you. But I'm not here as a customer. I'm looking for a job as a waitress. I'd like to help... You'll have to excuse me. The lunch rush is about to start. Daryl, stations, please. Hey, boys. Ma'am? Can I take your order? Just the usual. I'm sorry. It's hard to remember each regular's culinary preferences. Cup of coffee? Oh, yeah. Cup of joe? Can I interest you in a generous hunk of pie? No, thanks. I don't want to be any bigger target out there than I have to. Well, as you can see, the three of us can handle things even when it gets busy. Well, the cheery smile of a good waitress can do a lot to stimulate business. Afraid we got that one covered. I'll bet I could have gotten him to take that piece of pie. Go on. We offer him some every time he comes here. Just watch. Officer? Are you sure you won't change your mind about this pie? Well, I'd love to, but in my line of work, fitness equals survival. Come on, surely one piece of pie isn't going to hurt his stomach as flat as that. <laughs> it is often mistaken for a washboard. <laughs> what the hell? Pie me. <laughs> wow. Little lady, you got a W-4 form to fill out. Oh, really? You're amazing. We thought we'd been saving that pie in vain for the last six months. <laughs> those, those wouldn't be for me, would they? <laughs> they're, they're for Kathy, right? She's freshening up right now. <laughs> You're going to wait, aren't you? It's a shame about this Barnaby thing, isn't it? Why don't we put those in some water? <laughs> for, for Kathy, right? Great. <laughs> Understand you guys are broken up about about Barnaby. <laughs> uh, fellas. Just hold on to this. <laughs> Daryl, there you are. What's going on here? Are you responsible for this? They were both bringing flowers for Kathy. I see. Daryl, get back to the cafe and wait for me. I'm sorry you were subjected to such hormonally motivated behavior. I guess the only thing to do is find out which Daryl she prefers and lock the happy couple in a barn for a while. Larry, I, I, I think I know Kathy well enough to say that the, the Daryl of her choice is, is neither. Gosh, I thought between the two of them they would have covered all ranges of taste. Go, go figure. Well, I'll update Daryl. Meantime, could you explain the situation to Miss Kathy? Why, why me? You have the ability to talk about affairs of the heart without using graphic sexual terminology. It's a, it's a, a gift. Well, I never thought I'd see the day 
when a pretty face could turn brother against brother. Is it really worth it? <laughs> well, I have it on good authority that Kathy ain't a smidgen interested in you or you. From here on, you two leave Miss Kathy be. Now, let's see some forgiving and forgetting. Hi, guys. Miss Kathy? Listen, I hate to be the cause of any friction between you, so I think it's really important that you know my feelings. What I'm trying to say is, uh, well, this is hard for me, so... how to show you. I hope you feel the same. Well, so far, so good. Oh, Larry. Uh, excuse me. We're ready to order now. Oh, you're coming. Um, listen, uh, we'll all, uh, talk later. <laughs> oh, hi, guys. Now, Daryl, I know how this looks, but I had no idea she had eyes for yours truly. <laughs> Kathy Edward What are you doing here? Kathy, I want to talk to you Why don't you just write me another note? Oh, Kathy, I know I did a terrible thing But I was scared I mean, marriage is for life After I left here, I realized that I'd have no life without you we have nothing more to say to each other, Edward. Kathy, please. I'm sorry. <laughs> so am I. I don't think so, Miss Kathy. What's wrong? I know this may sound crazy, you being such a tasty bag of groceries and all, <laughs> but I just don't think it'd be right. Well, Larry, don't worry about Edward. You heard me tell him that we're through. I heard what you told him. But your mouth was having a major argument with your eyes. <laughs> There's a bird in these woods called the sapsucker. When it mates, it mates for life. The boy sapsucker and the girl sapsucker just have something in their eyes that says, I'm for you and you're for me forever. I saw that something in your eye for Edward and in his for you. Larry, people are not sapsuckers. I don't know. <laughs> Cover them with feathers. Jam a big snout on their face, slice off some toes, lop off their arms, wrap wings on their spinal column. I'd be hard pressed to tell the difference. Well, we're just a hair's breadth away from being birds. If you hurry, you can catch up with him. Oh, Larry, you're so wise. I'm never gonna forget you. Larry, what you just did was wonderful. Then why do my insides feel like they've just been worked over by a Benihana chef? <laughs> I have no girl. I have no brothers. I have no home. Stand back, Daryl. I got a Pop-Tart in my pocket. I'm not afraid to use it. <laughs> What's that? Oh, my, a lovely chafing dish. <laughs> to Larry and Kathy, good luck wherever you may roam. Oh, they've accepted Larry's relationship. I, I guess I'm the only one who hasn't. <laughs> Daryl, this is beautiful, aside from the spelling. But Miss Kathy just left town with her previous fiancé. I realize you probably taunt me for the rest of my days, but go ahead. Do your worst. Oh. You're the best, brothers. Sometimes things just go so right with that DNA. 